Finally tonight, it has been one whole year since thousands of beagles were rescued from a life of medical research and dispersed to shelters all across the country to find new homes. Invigo was a facility in Virginia breeding the dogs to sell to laboratories, but shut down after multiple animal welfare citations, including unreported deaths and improper vet care. Maine was the last state to get a shipment of the dogs and puppies seized. We met with three families, all with different backgrounds, who stepped up to save the Invigo Beagles. Hey, this is Gracie. Hi, Gracie. Oh, Come here. Gosh. Gracie oh, and her gosh. owner, oh, Kathy gosh. Hurst, met one year ago here at the Animal Refuge League of Greater Portland. And she put her in my arms, and it was like, it's glued. <laughs> You're not getting this dog back. <laughs> at just about a year old, Gracie hadn't known a life outside of a cage in a breeding facility in Virginia. After years of inspections and violations, the Humane Society of the United States was given custody of some 4,000 beagles. And they basically were just breeding beagles as quickly as possible to be sold to research institutions for various types of research. And so these dogs were destined for a life of loneliness and pain um, in a research facility. The move was a massive undertaking, and the dogs, ranging from puppies to breeding adults, were flown or driven all across the country. Nine shelters and organizations in Maine opened their doors and called up their foster homes for help. That Maine was taking on a financial burden um, from spaying and neutering to making sure that they had everything they need. When these dogs came into us, they didn't have names. They had green tattoos on the inside of their ear. Gracie's tattoo is fading along with her terror of crates or cars or even just being outside. There's no ceiling, there's no sides, you know, so she was she was afraid of that. She would sometimes scoot out the door and, uh-oh, flatten. I think that it was all such an incredible learning experience for him. He had lived his life in a kennel, never been outside, so every single thing was new to him, everything, whether it was grass, whether it was the shutting of a refrigerator door, whether it was accidentally dropping a fork on the floor, everything was new, and I think that that was a lot to absorb. Me too. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to cry. One year into their new lives, we were able to reunite three of the Invigo Beagles, Gracie, Sir Biscuit of Barkingham, and Artemis Howell. And their owners had a chance to swap stories about their own learning curves with these nervous pups and the joys of experiencing new things. Super cuddly, very affectionate, um, wild at times. Tons of energy when she has those little moments of zoomies where she really wants to get uh, whatever she's feeling, she wants to get out. The reunion is also a rare moment for Katie Hansberry with the Humane Society and Patsy Murphy of the ARLGP to see the results of their hard work. This is a huge shot in the arm for myself, my team, our community. We've had board members here today. We rarely take the opportunity to stop and look back. We're so present in the moment. We're so focused on what's ahead of us. Who needs us next? What's the next life that's hanging in the balance? So to take this opportunity to stop and reflect a year later is really um, an important inspirational moment for our, our team. And now these pups all across the country have become ambassadors of sorts to incite change at the federal level to better protect more animals. Um, it's been gratifying, really gratifying uh, to see the rebound. Because of what they saw at Invigo, the Humane Society is pushing for the Better Care for Animals Act, which would give the Department of Justice more tools and remedies to enforce the Animal Welfare Act. That act already prevents breeding or research facilities from certain levels of animal cruelty, but the goal is to give the DOJ and the Department of Agriculture more room to enforce. You can read more about it in this story on our website or our New Center Maine app.